ഹായ് ഐ എം പ്രീത രഘുനാഥ് വെൽക്കം ടു മൈ ചാനൽ ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ഭാരതീയർ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി എം എസ് സി അപ്ലൈഡ് സൈക്കോളജി ഐ ഹാഡ് സീൻ എ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഇൻ ടു തൗസൻഡ് എയ്റ്റീൻ ഡിസംബർ ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇയർ അഡ്വാൻസ്ഡ് ജനറൽ സൈക്കോളജി പേപ്പർ ദ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ വോസ് ഡെപിക്റ്റ് ദ സ്ട്രക്ചർ ആൻഡ് ഫങ്ഷൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ ഇയർ സോ ടുഡേ ലെറ്റ് എസ് സ്റ്റഡി ദ സ്ട്രക്ചർ ആൻഡ് ഫങ്ഷൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ ഇയർ ഇയർ ക്യാൻ ബി ഡിവൈഡഡ് ഇൻ ടു ത്രീ പാർട്സ് ഔട്ടർ ഇയർ മിഡിൽ ഇയർ ആൻഡ് ഇന്നർ ഇയർ ഔട്ടർ ഇയർ കൺസിസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് പിന്ന ആൻഡ് എക്സ്റ്റേണൽ ഓഡിറ്ററി കനാൽ ഔട്ടർ ഇയർ സ്റ്റാർട്ട്സ് വിത്ത് ദ പിന്ന ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ പാർട്ട് ദാറ്റ് യു ക്യാൻ സി ആൻഡ് ടച്ച് its function is to act as a funnel and to collect as much sound waves as possible and channel it to the external auditory canal the sound waves pass through the auditory canal and eventually meet the eardrum or tympanic membrane eardrum is a transparent membrane which is very sensitive to the vibrations of the air so when the air inside the auditory canal vibrates tympanic membrane also starts to vibrate ear drum separates the outer ear from the middle ear middle ear extends from tympanic membrane to the oval window middle ear consists of three small bones known as malleus incus and stapes the names were given due to its similarity to the shapes of a hammer anvil and stirrer respectively they are together called as ossicles they transfer the vibrations of the tympanic membrane to the inner ear they amplify the pressure of the sound waves about 20 times when it reaches to the inner ear the pressure has to be increased because the inner ear has a fluid inside not air the tympanic membrane is larger in area when compared with the base of the stapes at the oval window so the force when transmitted from tympanic membrane to the oval window get concentrated in a very tiny area and thus the pressure get increased you know pressure is uh, force divided by area so when the same force is acting upon a smaller area the pressure get increased there is also a canal known as the eustachian tube which connects the middle ear with the upper part of the throat known as the nasopharynx this eustachian tube helps to adjust the air pressure inside the middle ear with the external air pressure let's see the inner ear inner ear consists of a bony structure it has mainly two parts uh the cochlea which is the hearing portion and the semicircular canals which is the balancing portion let us see inner ear in detail balancing parts of the inner ear are the vestibule and semicircular canals there are three semicircular canals sit at right angles to each other and filled with a fluid this semicircular canals are lined with fine hairs which pick up body movements instead of sounds like the hairs in the cochlea the hairs in the semicircular canals act like sensors that help with our balance when our head moves the fluid inside the semicircular canals shift around this moves the tiny hairs inside them the semicircular canals are connected by sacs in the vestibule that have more fluids and hairs in them they are called the saccule and 
ഡയോട്രിക്കൾ ദേ ഓൾസോ സെൻസ് മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ് ദീസ് മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ബാലൻസ് സെൻസസ് സെൻഡ് ഇലക്ട്രിക്കൽ നെർവ് മെസ്സേജസ് ടു അവർ ബ്രെയിൻ ത്രൂ വെസ്റ്റിബുലാർ നെർവ്സ് and in turn the brain tells our body how to stay balanced see the hearing portion in detail the cochlea can be divided into three segments there is a cochlear duct going through the middle and then there is a upper portion and a lower portion the upper part is known as scala vestibuli and the lower part is known as scala tympani the middle portion is the scala media there is a vestibular membrane which separates scala media from scala vestibuli and there is basilar membrane which separates scala tympani from scala media scala media consists of uh, this uh, hair cells organ of corti and tectorial membrane are inner hair cells and outer hair cells on top of each hair cell there are some bristle like uh, projections which are known as stereocilia when waves ripple through the fluid that is the endolymph inside the scala media uh, those hair cells brush against the tectorial membrane nerve impulses are triggered as the stereocilia on top of the hair cells are bent and brushes against this tectorial membrane and uh, this nerve impulses are later transferred to the brain through auditory nerve so let us see how are sound waves detected by the brain hair cells of organ of corti uh, there is perilymph vibration causes endolymph vibration this perilymph is there in the uh, upper and lower portions of the cochlea that is in the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani that two por- portions contains perilymph then this perilymph vibration causes endolymph vibration inside the uh, scala media this will cause basilar membrane vibration so this hair cells are located in basilar membrane movement of the basilar membrane causes cilia of hair cells to move against tectorial membrane then this uh, nerve impulses are triggered and then this will be sent to the brain through auditory nerve so let us summarize the physiology of hearing when an object vibrates in the air sound waves will be produced these sound waves will be transferred through pinna pinna is also known as auricle so through auricle or external ear this sound waves will reach to the external auditory canal from external auditory canal it will uh, reach to tympanic membrane or ear drum and will cause the vibration of the ear drum then the, this in turn will cause the movement of auditory ossicles or uh, the um, tiny bones inside the middle ear that is malleus incus and stapes then this movement in turn will cause the uh, vibration of the oval window of the inner ear which will produce ripples in the fluid that is present in the cochlea cochlea consists mainly of organ of corti and hair cells on top of each hair cell is the stereocilia or bristles when waves ripple through the fluid that surrounds the organ of corti these hair cells brush against the tectorial membrane and nerve impulses are triggered which are sent to brain through auditory nerve two theories explains the hearing the frequency theory holds that nerve impulses of a corresponding frequency as that of the pitch are fed into the auditory nerve 
For instance, a 900 hertz tone produces 900 nerve impulses per second. The second theory of uh, hearing is place theory. This place theory explains how higher tones or lower tones excite specific areas of the cochlea. Higher tones have a strong impact at the base of the cochlea near the oval window. Lower tones, in contrast, move the hair cells near the outer tip of the cochlea. The area of the cochlea most strongly activated decides the pitch of the sound. So, as per the place theory, which part of the cochlea get excited with the sound determines the pitch of that sound. That means um, the lower frequency sound will cause uh, the excitement of the organ of corti near the apex of the cochlea. And uh, the higher frequency sounds cause the excitement of the organ of corti near the base of the cochlea. So, which area of the cochlea uh, get stimulation? The pitch of the sound or the volume of or amplitude of the sound is determined by uh, that particular area. Uh, there are, uh, we can detect 20 to 20,000 heads of uh, frequency. So, each frequency has a particular organ of corti which responds to uh, the that uh, frequency and depending on which organ of corti is get excited determines the pitch or amplitude of the voice then uh, let us see about uh, deafness the two main types of deafness are conduction deafness and nerve deafness when the transfer of vibrations from the eardrum to the inner ear is weak, it results in conduction deafness. Generally, this deafness could be caused because of the disease or injury that results in damage or immobilization of the eardrums or ossicles. This defect may be overcome by wearing a hearing aid. The next deafness is nerve deafness. Damage to the hair cells or auditory nerve may result in nerve deafness. Since the auditory messages are blocked from reaching the brain, hearing aid does not come as a solution to this type of deafness. Artificial hearing systems are making it possible for some people to overcome their nerve deafness. Okay, thank you.